of the order of service for this service is available from our website and the hymn words are in that order of service and will be each week for the coming weeks of lockdown. I invite you to join with me now in singing. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. <laughs>
From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. The Lord of glory be with you. The Lord bless you. I invite you to pray with me and with all Christ's body gathered throughout the world today as our worship begins. Almighty God, as we gather in worship, we pray for your blessing on the church in this place. Here may the faithful find salvation and the careless be awakened. Here may the doubting find faith and the anxious be encouraged. Here may the tempted find hope and the sorrowful find comfort. Here may the weary find rest and the strong be relieved. Here may the aged find consolation, and the young be inspired. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may wish to kneel or bow your heads as we pray our prayers of penitence. Do not be anxious about your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink. Seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. Let us confess our sins and our failure to make God's will our priority. I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not clothe me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. I was sick and you did not visit me. In prison and you did not come to me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand with me and praise God in the words of the glory. Glory, glory to God, God in Christ and peace to his people on earth. Lord, Lord God, God heavenly King, Almighty God the Father, we, we worship you, we give you thanks, thanks. We, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Heavenly Father, at the Jordan you revealed Jesus as your Son. May we recognise him as our Lord and know ourselves to be your beloved children. Through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Genesis. Chapter 1, reading verses 1 to 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. 
while the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand if you are able to hear the words of the Holy Gospel. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. John the Baptist. sight, loving God, creator, saviour and ever-present spirit. Amen. So on this second Sunday in Epiphany, we celebrate Christ's baptism. We remember in the words of Genesis that Jesus is the word who has been with us, with God, in God, from the beginning of time. And we celebrate Jesus going to the waters with John to receive the baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We might be forgiven for thinking there's a bit of a contradiction here. If we accept that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us, that Jesus is both fully human and fully divine, why does he need baptism for the forgiveness of sins if he is without sin? We're going to think about that together this morning. As our curate Carol told us last week, Epiphany is a season of revelation. The word Epiphany has in it the same Greek root that gives us cellophane, I find this a really useful reminder that through the stories we hear in this season, we will be able to see through to who Jesus really is. I was really hoping this morning that we would be able to share in the baptism of three lovely children. It would have been my first baptism since becoming vicar here at St. Peter's. 
And David, Elizabeth, and Daniel, if you are watching at home, we will not forget, and we will see you as soon as we can for that baptism. We will miss them, and the example they would have given us this morning, but still we reflect today on both what it means that we are baptised and what it means that Jesus is, and how those of us not yet baptised might respond to what is revealed to us of the truth of Jesus. Wherever we are in our faith journey, whatever bits of Christian doctrine we do or do not accept in full, in part, in a fuzzy way or not at all, I'd like to think that everyone who joins us for worship this morning or later in the week as you catch up does so because there is something about Jesus. Something about him that will not let them go. Jesus, wonderful counsellor, prince of peace, Emmanuel, God with us. We heard those words here and at churches of all kinds throughout the world at Christmas. And the baby in the manger is all very nice. But what difference does it make to everyday living in the real world? Once the tree is on the compost heap and the fridge is detoxed and all signs of Christmas are put away. Those are the questions that this epiphany season is all about. We describe baptism in our creed as being for the forgiveness of sins. So why does Jesus come? Jesus, Son of God. If ever there was a person who was perfect, a person in whom all the wonder of the divine but all the reality of being human were combined, then Jesus is as perfect as it gets. We understand Jesus as without sin and try to be as like him in that as we can possibly be. But despite being without sin, he comes to the water to be baptised anyway. Why might that be? He comes to the river because it marks the beginning of something new, a change, a transformation. It marks it so everyone can see and know, not just that change is happening, but that Jesus embraces it and welcomes it. Jesus is moving from hanging out in the family carpentry business to active ministry. That's the change his baptism marks. This is what we see too every time a new Christian comes to baptism. In our own baptism, it marks a decision which we need to embrace, acknowledge, talk about, however long ago it may have been. Jesus has called us all to follow him, to do things God's way, and it's just the start of something, a journey that goes on. Jesus comes to the river, and I think it's important that we get to hear who Jesus is straight from the horse's mouth. If I don't get struck down by lightning for calling God a horse. When we decide to be Christians, or to commit to bringing our children up as Christians, we are making a leap of faith. We do all we can to work out sensibly and rationally if it's the right thing. We say, well, Jesus was a nice bloke and did things in a nice way, so it can't do any harm. I have heard that often in baptism prep. We read the Bible. We worship together. We explore the tradition and the understanding of two millennia together, and all to get closer to who Jesus is and what that means for our lives. But every now and again, it's good to hear it straight. No messing. A voice is heard. The heavens are torn. This is who Jesus is. The beloved child of God. I think and I hope that this sets us free sometimes to stop overthinking and to respond 
with our faith. And Jesus comes to the river because it's where we need to be. We get to share in Christ's baptism in our scriptures, in this festival, in our lives as Christians, because it puts Jesus right where we are. Jesus does not say, I'm too perfect as the Son of God to walk with you. Jesus wades into the water. Jesus doesn't need to be washed of sin, but at some point in our lives, we all will. And our living, loving God knows that. Jesus never puts himself somewhere else, somewhere tidier or easier or above and beyond the here and now, the messy reality of our human lives. Born in a stable and wading in the water, Jesus chooses to step in, to be next to us. Each time a person is baptised into God's family, we make promises that affirm all this. That we trust God to walk with them and with us. That we believe as a community of faith that Jesus is right with them in the water of baptism. We affirm that God's spirit is with them. That we can see what God sees. That each person baptised is a beloved child of God. When we share in Christ's baptism, we celebrate and embrace it as our lives are transformed to be more Christ-like. When we share in Christ's baptism, we take that leap of faith, liberated by God's love. When we share in Christ's baptism, we know that God is right beside us. Jesus calls to each of us today and every day, do not be afraid for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. As each child of God baptised into this community of faith moves through life, we will try and teach them and one another how precious we are in God's sight. And as baptised Christians ourselves, to share what difference that makes to who we are and what we do in the world. Amen. Amen. Please stand with me as we declare our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sit or kneel as we share. Eternal God, it feels as if the whole world has changed, and yet in you there is stability and the opportunity of a new beginning. So we pray now for those whose lives are in turmoil, those whose lives have been turned upside down, those who feel lost. We pray for those for whom the lockdown has come as a relief, for those who now feel safer. But we pray too for those who now feel desperate, alone, 
and worried about their jobs, their finances, their mental health. Jesus, Lord of the Church, in your mercy, hear us. We pray for children and young adults as their schooling is disrupted. We pray for those who enjoy learning from home. But pray too for those who will lose confidence, who will miss their friends, who feel vulnerable. We remember their parents and the parents of children with special needs, struggling to cope on their own. We pray for teachers, administrative staff, and all those who feel overwhelmed. Jesus, Lord of the Church, in your mercy, hear us. We pray for all key workers in this pandemic. Give strength and resilience to those battling to fight this virus, who feel overwhelmed and are living day by day on empty reserves. Comfort them in their hour of need and support them with your love. Jesus, Lord of the Church, in your mercy, hear us. We pray for one another, our families, our communities, our church fellowships. May we support those who are unwell or grieving. May we bring fresh hope to those who feel forgotten and are vulnerable. And may we, both practically and prayerfully, share our faith with them. Let us each bring to mind, in a moment of silence, family, friends or acquaintances who are in need of our prayers. Jesus, Lord of the Church, in your mercy, hear us. We remember all who have recently died and pray for their friend, friends and family. We also pray for all those whose year's mind falls at this time, especially the Reverend Jim Hunt, who was a curate at St Peter's before moving to St Mark's Longwood. We thank you for all the ways in which he enriched our lives and worship. Almighty and eternal God, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted, either by death or life, hear our prayers and thanksgivings for all whom we remember this day. Fulfill in them the purpose of your love, and bring us all with them to your eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus, Lord of the Church, in your mercy, hear us. God of mercy, you know us and love us and hear our prayer. Keep us in the eternal fellowship of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen.
faithful God, receive all we offer you this day. May we so love the life of Christ that your church may be a sign of salvation to all the nations of the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. Yes, His yes, Spirit yes, is with us. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, you celebrated your new gift of baptism in signs and wonders at the Jordan. Your voice was heard from heaven to awaken faith in the presence among us of your word made flesh. Your spirit was seen as a dove, revealing Jesus as your servant and anointing him with the oil of gladness to preach the good news to the poor. Therefore, as we celebrate the union of earth and heaven, we rejoice to hear the song of the angels in heaven, forever praising you and saying, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me.
Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, 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 Christ is risen. Christ, Christ, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes, and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with Mary the God-bearer, Peter, and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We kneel if able, or bow our heads, to pray in faith, as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, hear among us. Light in the midst of us. Bring us to light and life.
Lord of all time and eternity. You opened the heavens and revealed yourself as Father in the baptism of Jesus, your beloved Son. By the power of your Spirit, complete the heavenly work of our rebirth through the waters of the new creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you that through this spiritual communion, you have united us with your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. It's come to that time in our service where we share community notices and there are a few things I wanted to let you know about today. As I mentioned at the start of the service, the church buildings are now closed, but the church is very much open and alive. If you need to contact us, if you're already on our electoral roll, you have a pastoral carer and a part of a pastoral care group, Please do feel free to contact the church through your pastoral carer and through that group or to call in to the office. Our parish administrator is working from home, but if you ring the office, there will be a number to divert to so that you can contact the office at all the usual times and all messages will be responded to. On next Sunday, the 17th of January, we are relaunching our junior church session. These have been happening on Zoom over the last few months with a weekday evening session. But after we've talked to some of our families about what might work best for them, next Sunday we're starting a Zoom session, which will be a 20-minute creative session looking at the gospel with the children. And then 10 minutes at the end of family worship together. We're hoping that's something that will enable all our families who've not been able to come back into church to join in. So please do look out on social media and on the website for more information about that. But that will be starting next Sunday. If you'd like some more information, please do get in touch with myself or any of the team this week. Our Bible study continues on Wednesday evenings on Zoom and people are welcome to join that Bible study at any point. At the moment, we're using the Pilgrim resources, looking at the Lord's Prayer together. If you're joining us for worship now on a regular basis throughout lockdown, please do look for the order of service on the website. Each week, we will provide an order of service which has the hymn words on it, so that you can join in at home. We'll try and make sure that that is on the website no later than Thursday, so that you have time to get that information in advance of the service. I appreciate that this morning you may not have been able to break off and go and print an order of service with the words of the hymns on, um, but we will get that up early for everybody in future weeks. Is there anything else I should be giving notices about, folks? I think that's it for now, other than to say, Thank you for bearing with us. We know that it hasn't been required by law for us to close, but we have made the decision on the basis that we have made all our decisions through this terrible pandemic time. How can we in our actions as Christians show that we are trying to love our neighbours, that we are trying to diminish the risk for everyone, that we are trying to stand shoulder to shoulder with those who are suffering most through this epidemic and still trying to provide the opportunity for us to worship together. I hope you know and will understand and I hope that you will help others to join in this streamed worship as we move through the coming weeks. We stand together now to sing our final hymn, Crown Him With Many Crowns.
the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light from light, lead you also in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. Amen. Amen. May God the Son who turned water into wine at the wedding feast at Cana transform your lives and make glad your hearts. Amen. Amen. May God the Holy Spirit who came upon the beloved Son at his baptism in the River Jordan pour out his gifts on you who have come to the waters of new birth. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those who you love this day and always. Amen. Amen. We have seen his glory, the glory revealed to all the nations. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.